Hello Grade 7s. Today we are going to look at emotive language and you can refer to this in your English booklet pages 8, 9 and 10 as well as your English textbook on pages 188 and on page 190. So let us firstly start by looking at what is emotive language. Emotive language is language that is used to stimulate or provoke emotions or feelings in the reader. Let's have a look at an example that you've read recently in the newspaper about the recent dump fires in Pietermaritzburg. What emotions did this invoke in you? I'm sure you had a sense of anger and obviously fear because of the health that this environmental problem will pose. Secondly, many novels use emotive language because they want the reader to feel the emotions that the characters are feeling. Think about a recent novel that you have read. Could you empathize with the particular character? Thirdly, this helps the reader to become involved in the story and to know what is happening. So this is similar to identifying with characters in a story. Next one. The intention is to get a reaction from the audience. Politicians are very good at doing this because of the persuasive words that are used. A writer might do this by using certain words and by writing descriptions of characters to make the emotions seem real. Different words can be used to cause different reactions in the audience. So, boys and girls, here once again is the choice of persuasive and emotive words. And lastly, good writers show what a character is feeling through their thoughts and actions, rather by just telling us. So think about a particular novel that grips your attention because of the writer's skill by getting you to identify with the particular character. Example, what are your classic favorite books? Think about the Roald Dahl series, for example, and how he grips your attention with his ingenious writing skills. Now let's look at a few examples so that you can understand this concept. The first sentence, Put that in the recycle bin is a command because there is no emotional reaction. But if you say you should recycle because it saves the planet, then it is emotive because of the word saves, which invokes a sense of responsibility. The second sentence, an innocent bystander was murdered in cold blood in Johannesburg. The word innocent and murdered and the phrase in cold blood are the uses of emotive language in this sentence. Thirdly, the defenseless victims we attacked at night. The phrases defenseless victims at night and the word attacked are the uses of emotive language in this sentence. So can you see how in the next sentence we have used the words appalling and incredibly to elicit an emotion? Otherwise, you could have simply said, that behavior is dangerous. Can you see in the next sentence? Can you identify the emotive words? Have a look at it. Our neighbors are cruel and merciless. That's correct. So cruel and merciless are your emotive words. Identify the emotive words in the next sen sentence, boys and girls. He is a life-saving hero. So instead of saying he is a hero, your emotive word is life-saving. Let's have a look at the next sentence. All the strenuous, strenuous homework is making our children exhausted and anxious. So if you look at it, you could simply have said, all this homework is making our children exhausted. But you have used the word strenuous instead, as well as anxious. Can you identify the emotive words in the last sentence? And ask yourself, what are your feelings when you have read this last sentence? So can you see that the emotive word here is vicious as well as fierce and terrified and defenseless? Lastly, 
Let's read through a short passage about Nelson Mandela's speech at the Rivonia trial. Don't forget when you read, you must firstly skim and scan. And always remember the aim of this passage is to identify the emotive language. So let's start reading. During what is known as the Rivonia trial in 1964, Nelson Mandela was faced with a possible death sentence for the number of crimes he had committed. He read a speech from a piece of paper until he got to this part below. He put his piece of paper down and looked straight into the eyes of the judge, Justice Devet, and said. So we'll just stop at this part because I want you to know from you, why do you think that the words look straight into the eyes of the judge is highlighted? Obviously, if you're reading in context and if you're looking at the emotive language and its purpose, you would say that he is looking with sincerity at the judge, won't you? And also, always remember that what they say about the eyes are the windows to the soul. So he wants the judge to take him seriously as to what he is saying to him. Let's carry on with the second part. During my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to the struggle of the African people. I fought against white domination and I fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. So boys and girls, the next part we are going to look at some of the questions and we're going to discuss these uh, questions as well as some of the answers. Now let's have a look at some of the questions based on that short passage. Number one. Which words make this an emotive speech? The entire passage is fueled with emotive words. Just looking at the second paragraph, there are words such as dedicated, fought, cherished, which reflects the emotion in his speech. Number two, what are your feelings after reading this extract? Your feelings could be one of pride and admiration for this great man. Number three, what is the ideal that Mandela stands for? His ideal is to have a democratic and free society where people live in harmony with equal opportunities. Number four, which particular words show that he is totally committed to his cause? The words he is prepared to die for, his cause reflects his commitment. And lastly, number five, explain what emotive language means. I've already done that, so I'm not going to repeat that part. And has Mandela achieved this in his speech? I have, we can definitely say that he has aroused your emotions of admiration because he is willing to die for his cause. Okay, boys and girls, in conclusion, I want you to please complete classroom activity three on page 190 of your textbook, as this activity will help you determine whether you have understood the concept of emotive language. Thank you, boys and girls, and please be safe always.